Hey, this is Brian with King Grizzly, and today I would like to show you how to make a nice content overlap in Elementor, like this, um, without using negative margins, without using negative padding. There's a really nice alternative method a lot of people don't know about, and it can be mobile responsive. Plus, you don't get any strained overlaps that make it hard to click on the sections and widgets in the Elementor editor. So let's jump right in and see how this works. Okay, let's take a quick look at what we're building. So we've got an image that's floating off the edge of the content area. So we've got the, the purplish color field behind it, the text, but the image is, is floating out to the left to create this neat effect. And if we take a look at tablet and mobile, you can see it works nicely, but there's a difference, right? On mobile, the image is on the top and actually it's bleeding off the, the top edge instead of the left side as in tablet and desktop. So how did we build this? So here's, here's the secret. Um, this is a section and on the newer versions of Elementor soon to be stable, this would be called a container. Um, but what I have is a section with two columns. So you can see I've got two columns here. I've renamed my section in the navigator. Um, if you didn't know you can do that by default, it would have been um, section and but the trick is if you click on the column that has the image and go to style I set a background which is actually a gradient and so I've got a, a purple gradient that's 50% wide and then I have actually a, a transparent color here behind the image so this is not actually this image is not actually leaving any content area so we'll we'll go ahead and start making one to match so I can show you step by step so here's a new section I have some code written that gives me nice padding in my sections right away by default but you can click on a section and add padding as needed um, but what I did then is you know I just dropped in my image I want an image here um, I wanted a headline, I wanted, I'm just getting these widgets over here, some text, and I wanted a button. So put those in. What I did is I, I think I clicked on the section and then went to um, layout, vertical align middle. That's how I got my text to be in the middle. And then uh, I've added some padding to these columns. This is all just sort of optional styling right um, but just doing that to show and then on this actually I might have used a, a bigger amount of padding like 50 then on the the column with the image 50 um, so then what I can do is I can set a background color on my column so on the right hand column I just chose one of my global colors um, I may want to change the color here of my fonts so they actually look good But the real secret is on the left side here, how do we get that gradient? So I click here on style and then under normal, instead of the classic, I'm going with gradient. And then I need to choose two colors. So I went with my brand purple and then I, I went ahead and picked a, a transparent color. Now, if you don't know how to do transparent, just click on this uh, little red line, choose a color like white and then down here you can adjust the transparency. So I'm going to slide that. You can see right now um, the gradient goes from top to bottom, so that doesn't really work for how I wanted to design this, but I can change the angle. And I'm pretty bad at math, so I just kind of have to fiddle around. <laughs> um, but I happen to know 90. But you'll see this is a nice sort of blend, but that's not what I want. The trick here is a hard edge. So what we do is we change our location. And I did 50, so this would be like the 50% so then I get what looks like a hard edge there. I could change that. Like if I wanted to do 75, I could do 75. If I wanted to have an angle, whoops, that's not what I meant. Down here, I can I can play around with the angle, right? So you can come up with some really interesting uh, designs. I'm going to stick with 90. We'll go with 50. And so you, you, you may already be seeing where this is going, right? Because you could, wow, well, depending on the angle you choose, and how you do your colors, you could you could have something that appears to go off the top, off the left, off the right. I could put other content in here, right? Like I could put an intersection in here and put multiple pieces of content in it and then fake that, that background. Now, the real question is going to be when we start getting down to, say, 
tablet and mobile. Now I, I fiddled around with my styling so that I could have a little more breathing room. So I think I, I zeroed out the padding on the whole section. Like so, maybe I'll add some margin on the top just to give us some space from the demo. And then you'll see, I, I must, I fiddle around here with the padding in that left hand column. So you can adjust, you know, per device size to get a look you like. And then I clicked on my image, went to style, and I can actually set a height. This is a cool trick if you don't know it. I can choose a height I like, so something sort of square-ish like that. And then this new option appears called Object Fit. And I went ahead and chose Cover, and that keeps it from warping. And that's, that's how I kind of got that effect. So, so you could, there's different ways you can size it. But tablet works, you know, pretty intuitively. But the question is, when we get down to mobile, here, you know, what's going to happen is if I if I were to remove this image momentarily and delete that, you'll see I've got still my half gradient there. And the challenge is if I click on this column, go to style, there is no mobile option for gradient location. So I can't just say, hey, on, on mobile, make it 180, right? Like if you look at my first one up here, what did I do? Well, we got, um, I think, two or three options here. So uh, number one is I wanted to center my image. So I think I, I click on that column. One option is to horizontally align it center. Um, also for this column, I'm going to need to adjust my padding because I have that left padding. If I zero it out, uh, the image actually is, is filling the width, but I could, I could click on that image and play with the settings for it. So for example, uh, maybe my max width, I want it to be like 90% or something like that, or 80. I want to leave a little room. But you can see that that gradient's not right for what we want. Um, so there's a couple options here for dealing with this gradient effect on mobile that isn't, you know, it's not really set up right for this vertical orientation. So the two options are, number one, is we can upload a background image that only affects mobile. Or number two, we can use some CSS. Um, I've done both, so I'll, I'll show you quickly both. So let's say we wanted to use an image here. So um, what I could do is click on this column, and then uh, I want to go to the Style tab and Background Overlay. So Background is already set to the gradient, right? And it's not, you can't change it per device size. Um, so one thing I could do is I could go to a Background Overlay, I could click on the Paintbrush, and then I could add an image. So I'm going to basically add a background image just for mobile. It, you know, it won't be on tablet or desktop. So in my library, I've got two options. I uploaded one is just a pixel. So I'll show you that. I just uploaded a one pixel that's the same color. And you'll see what happens is it fills the space. Now, this may actually be what you want. Um, if it is, then what I would suggest is on the column, maybe adding <clears throat> some some padding on the top, right? So it, it fits in there, right? Um, I guess you could also do a negative margin on the image just on mobile, like I could click on this and do a negative top margin. This kind of defeats the purpose of going this route. Whoops, not a not negative 140. Anyhow, you could fiddle with, with that, right? That's an option. Um, so a solid, just a pixel that basically is repeating. If I click on that column, go back to style, background overlay, what it's doing is it's just re it's just repeating that pixel. Um, or what I also could do is create an image that you can't see it here in the preview. It's basically 50-50 purple and white. Uh, in Illustrator, I made like a, a image that was like part, half half white, half purple. So I can set that to repeat X. Uh, if it repeat Y is up and down, right? So that wouldn't work or just leave it on the default, I think that would work. So what it's doing, if I say no repeat, you can see my little image is actually over here on the left, but you could, we can still see through the background to the gradient, which isn't going away. So I wanna hide that with a repeat. And I could fiddle around uh, with the position of this by choosing custom. I could try you know, different types of images, but I can get that effect also with an image. The, the deal is I have to use the white to block out that gradient background, right? So that, so there's two options with an image approach, which can be pretty fast. Uh, now, if I turn that off, the other option we have, if we go back up here, is CSS. So if I click on this column on the original, hit advance, you'll see I added a class so I can target that column. And then I added some custom CSS. Now, this CSS might look a little intimidating, right? I'll, I'll explain it. Um, so 
Elementor has a way you can target device with that little snippet there. So I'm targeting mobile only with this CSS. If I wanted to do tablet or desktop, I could type tablet or desktop. Um, or you could write a media query if you're familiar with those and only have this happen at certain sizes. Then I'm targeting my gradient rotate that I added. And then um, a class inside which is responsible for um, at where I want to add this, this background gradient. Now, mine looks a little crazy because I'm using one of these global color variables from Elementor. But don't worry, if you want to create a gradient, a nice tool is there's different websites, but here's one, cssgradient.io. What I can do, I believe when I first load this up, it's more like, like this, um, but you can click on these little scrubbers and change their color values, right? So type one in or, or just, I'll, I'll use a, actually a color we're not using. So we'll just go with something else, pink. Um, and then I need the I need the the white here, right? And then I want to set their location to 50 percent, uh, right? Just like we did in Elementor. I can pull that off, fifty, and then this one, fifty. So there we go. Except it's upside down from how I wanted, right? Um, so I could fiddle around with this, where I'm probably going to struggle because I'm not good at math. Can I do negative 180? That would be cool. Nope. Looks like what I need is zero. There we go. So it's it's actually writing the code for me, which is pretty nice. I think it even has a fallback here. So I could take this code here and then come back over here. I think this is how I did it. I could be I could be off. Um, yep. I'm up. Oh, I pasted it wrong. I just need to replace this linear gradient. Ah, finally. I Okay, this is good for you to watch me struggle. I need to add an important override here. And I need to get rid of that. Okay, that was painful, but you can see me struggle. So um, basically what's happening is I'm changing the background and I don't know if I need image there. Background works just fine. Um, so basically, we're targeting um, that with CSS. And if I go to tablet, you'll see it's not applying. It only happens on desktop. So a couple good options there for managing uh, your mobile. But this is a really nice way to get overlaps without having to use negative settings. And you can get quite fast at it. And there's a lot of creative options, I think. I'd be curious to see what you know, what people do with this uh, information. So hopefully that was helpful. If it was, please consider subscribing to our channel as we'll roll out more elementary content. And I hope you have a good day. Thanks.